This is the Surface Book 3, the third main entry in the Surface Book lineup. And I was lucky to check it out being loaned by Microsoft. So we're going to be very careful when we do our unboxing here because I know individuals love to see things unboxed. So we're briefly showing that off here. One thing I actually really like about the Microsoft products in the last five years or so is the packaging is quite impeccable. So normally there'd be a soft sort of sleeve over top of this, but it's been taken out because again, this is a loaner. So once you take the device itself out, being very careful, you get a little bit of literature and you also get a little box that has your fairly lengthy power cord included with it. So with the Surface Book 3, there are two options available as primary device uh, selections. You have a 13 inch and a 15 inch. I was reviewing the 15 inch. And from there, there are smaller specifications and choices you can make in order to alter your hardware. So there's going to be some variations on the difference between your device and mine based on what you had edited and selected for your particular Surface Book. So with this, we did get an i7-1065 10th gen processor, and that is paired with a up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, if you so choose, two options there. There's also an SSD hard drive. You can choose between 256, 512, or one terabyte for the space there, which is fairly standard for laptops and such today. When it comes to the graphics card, there's a GTX 1660 Ti included, and you're getting a screen resolution of 3240 by 2160 for a three by two aspect ratio and 260 PPI as the visual density. So it's quite lovely and it's got a gorgeous screen to it. It's got quite a lot of great specs and it's generally a very impressive design. So I did review the Surface Book 2 previously, so I can make direct comparisons in regards to what has been upgraded from iteration to iteration. With this, it's mostly the same device outer shell. The chassis is about the same, but the internal specs have been improved a lot because we are getting a 50% increase in performance over the last one. We've got a great battery life here too. You're supposed to get about 17 and a half hours out of it. You can kind of get close to that if you're doing very light web browsing or video usage, which is generally still great for a laptop offering. If you are pushing in a little harder, you're obviously going to get a little bit less and your mileage may vary. But if you're doing like programs and everything like that, it should last a very long time. Because this is a device for the professional, the high-end creator, the content creator, someone that wants something that is great for work. That's not to say you can't do play, but this is very much a work-oriented offering when it comes to this type of device. So this is something to take to a work site on the go, working at home. It's very comfortable as a laptop, but it's also a two-in-one, which actually makes this design quite unique in regards to the fact that you can set this down and you can detach the screen again, being a very unique offering. So you can use it as just a tablet or you can use it as a traditional laptop offering, which is really cool. And it's got this distinct hinge. Now the hinge is a design we've seen that's basically about the same. I would again, really like them to maybe iterate on the design of the actual Surface Book itself. This is such a premium offering and there's some smaller aspects of it that I feel aren't as premium as they maybe should be. So the hinge has a kind of an awful sort of creaking sound to it when it's used. It would be great if that would be mostly silent if possible. I know design wise with the hinge that's kind of hard, but you know, right out of the box, it should be, you know, at least a little bit quieter for its hinge offering. And I'm not sure what they could do to design and change that, but that's up to them. I'm not working in that. I just review things. So it's cool to take this as something, uh, you know, you can sit down on your lap or on the desk and you can use it like a regular laptop or detach it and just carry it around as a nice tablet offering. The tablet, the gorgeous screen is just absolutely fantastic in that viewing way. And I love to hold it as just a tablet and kind of go around using it for video or using it for writing or anything like that. It'd be really great for drawing if you're an artist and you want to have something that is very professional and is really well opted for a Surface Pen or I guess you could say other sort of virtual drawing type device offering. It works very well in that regard. I think it'd be great for that type of thing if you are in that line of work. 
So it's also something that is a little bit of fun. I did some gaming benchmarks on it. I used Gears Tactics. That is my particular chosen game for this year in technology benchmarking. It's got a great set of benchmarking tools and this, since it is the flagship Microsoft option, I guess, has a specific set of uh, pre-setup options with Gears Tactics. So that was really great to see. We can get a 1440p standard and it hits 60 FPS almost all the time in the benchmark. It was very impressive. It had fairly high option setup, and I was just really impressed by that. Now I did play around with it and got some other benchmarking options, but the 1440p looks really good. It's got a good visual quality and it runs quite well, which again, I thought was fairly impressive. I also tried Minecraft, which is kind of a standard testing for me across any of the devices of anything I use. I love to test and see what Minecraft can provide on that particular device. It renders quite far, plays good, looks fantastic, and I was generally pleased with that. So that's kind of the gaming side of things. So you can play some games on this, and it is decent for that, but this is very much a work-oriented device. Now, the laptop portion of it, the base, the keyboard is fantastic. It's one of the best keyboards I've ever used. It's smooth, it's comfy, it's nice to graze across as you're typing and working, because I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of typing, and that's just generally what part of my profession is. So it's really great for that. It also has a backlight for at night if you just want to focus in on the screen and you want to see those keys if you need to. It's got three different tiers of lighting options for brightness, and that's pretty solid. You know, if you want to use it in that way, it looks kind of cool. It would be nice to maybe have some RGB options there, some different colors, because it is just like a white backlight. But you know, it's solid and it gets the job done for what is needed in that regard. So moving past that, you know, something that is good for battery life, good for design, and good for work and play. It's an all-around device that generally gets the job done. Now I would like to talk about the touchpad. So alongside, you know, the keyboard, the typing, there is the touchpad. So it's kind of noisy when you click into it. It would be nice if it was maybe silent or a little quieter. It's just the sound it makes really isn't that appealing. And that's really a lot of the things in this, is this feels very similar to the Surface Book 2. It's a lot faster, again, 50% boost in performance, but, you know, aside from the internal specs that are stellar, it is something that has these little smaller things where it's like you could work towards making it a little bit better because this is such a premium offering. It's a very expensive device, and it should be nearly perfect for that. And again, it's very well done, it's great, and it's silent too. So they've got a great heat system on this one. I used it for multiple hours while I was streaming as something that was a companion to me. It was just playing the video feed for me answering comments and checking other things while I was working and streaming a game and, you know, doing that sort of live streaming activity. And with that, it was silent the whole time. Played for many, many hours, not a sound. Even when you play games like Gears Tactics, you know, you hear it a bit more, you hear the fans, but the way it's dispersed is very quiet, and it's very well done. Because in the modern age, when it comes to my devices, I don't want to hear them, and I think that's really great. So it's got a good system, it's got a good setup, and it's got very great internals, like the specs are quite impressive. Uh, it does also sound pretty good. It could have a bit better of a, I guess you could say, maybe a bass option when it comes to the audio, but it's still very, very loud, which is impressive. You can use this as something for listening to music for. You know, that's something I always test. I put on Traverches, I try to see how it sounds when I'm just, you know, listening to like a music video or something like that, because that's kind of important to many individuals too, is you want it to sound good. And since this is something that's supposed to be an all-around device, it's important that it hits all of the metrics across everything. And I think for the most part, this really does, and it does so very well in a very snappy and a very pleasing way with a gorgeous visual screen. The resolution quality is fantastic. And I'm just mostly impressed by what this has to offer. Again, I did mention some notes where I was like, okay, it could be a little bit pushed further, but I think it gets the job done. So this does have Wi-Fi 6, it has Bluetooth 5.0 support, and it has Xbox wireless support in the 15-inch model. When it comes to the outside ports, we have a number of great options. So on this side, we have a USB Type-C, we have also got an SD card reader, which is quite nice, a magnetic kind of plug-in thing, which is really good for charging, which is generally what I call it, two traditional USB slots, and it's also got a 3.5 millimeter aux jack if you're still rocking the old headphones or headsets. So that's kind of nice. It covers all the bases when it comes to the outside. 
and there's also geometer and those extra little things that you might use on the odd occasion. So it's got a little bit of everything when it comes to side connector ports and a wealth of options for plugging things in. Now I would also like to talk about the webcam options on here. So we've got a front and we've got an inside webcam. So that's a five and an eight megapixel offering respectively with the eight being the back because that is the higher option. So both sides are locked at 30 FPS for video recording. It really would be nice to have 60 FPS because I mean, again, it's a premium offering for the price. You think they'd get a sensor in there that can give you that kind of option. And it's disappointing that this one doesn't have that. It's not the biggest deal, but when you're using a webcam and it's like, you know, 60 is kind of hopefully becoming more of a standard over time. It just would be nice to have that future proofing for those that do care about it like myself. I'd also like the internal webcam to be a higher quality going forward if they are to do another iteration of this because it, it kind of looks bad for pictures and video. The front camera is pretty good. It's decent video. It's decent photos, but like you never really use this part of it, right? I mean, you're not going to hold this up and take picture. I mean, you could, but you're mostly going to be using this as a webcam when it's at like this and you're talking to people. So this, the inside one is actually almost more important than the outside one. And I feel they could have pushed it forward because you want that to look good. You want people to know when you're using a Surface Book, a high quality premium device, that wow, you have great picture quality coming through from your webcam. It's just a small extra thing. And I know it doesn't matter to a lot of people, but it's something to note that's important to me because that's just like, really? Overall, great device, great offering. It sounds quiet, silent, which is what I want. It works well, you can push it hard, you can get great battery life out of it. I give it an eight out of 10. You can read my full review in the description below. And if you do have any questions about the device, let me know, but I think I've covered all the grounds from work to play, to sound, to visual quality. No matter what type of working device you need it to be, it can achieve that and it can do a pretty good job.